Hey guys, in this video, I want to discuss with you some of the top gut irritating foods and ingredients to avoid. As we discuss so frequently on our YouTube channel, one of the major underlying factors in just about every disease state you could think of is the overproduction of stress hormones like cortisol. And of the seemingly endless list of things that tend to increase the chronic production of the stress hormone cortisol, one of the most profound is gut inflammation and gut irritation. So in other words, chronic digestive issues and specifically gut irritation or inflammation to the intestines is a stress and one of the major contributing factors to high levels of cortisol. So if you're somebody on a mission to lower your cortisol levels, if you know you're suffering from quote-unquote adrenal fatigue, hypothyroidism, or if you're experiencing some of the many symptoms of elevated levels of cortisol, then correcting digestive issues, things like constipation, gas, bloating, or known inflammatory issues of the intestinal tract like inflammatory bowel disease and even irritable bowel syndrome is going to be essential for ultimately correcting chronically elevated levels of stress hormones like cortisol. So now there's obviously many things that can contribute to the health of the intestines. Ultimately, it is our nervous system and metabolism and the balance of hormones in the body that direct or dictate the rate of digestion. So more than just the food that we eat, we need to make sure that overall our body is balanced and healthy if we want to have optimal digestive function and to avoid gut irritation and gut inflammation. However, that being said, Obviously, diet plays a huge role in the health of the digestive system, and a bad diet can ruin a perfectly good digestive system. And there are some foods that are particularly irritating to the gut and intestines that you're going to want to learn about and avoid if you're experiencing any sort of digestive issues, or again, if you're trying to correct the stress that is induced by digestive dysfunction. So what I want to share with you now is a couple of the top foods and food substances that are known to irritate the gut and lead to gut irritation and gut inflammation, which can ultimately cause a rise in the stress substance serotonin, which not only contributes to inflammation in the fibrosis of various tissues in the body, including the intestines, but serotonin is known to increase the production of cortisol, which can lead to a stress response in the body. So in general, there are certain fibers that are not necessarily digestible and don't break down the body efficiently and instead are fermented or digested by pathogens and bacteria in the small intestines, which leads to the production of lipopolysaccharides or endotoxin, which can actually damage the gut lining or the mucosal lining of the intestinal wall, which allows various toxins, including the endotoxin and serotonin and other food particles to enter the bloodstream, causing a very toxic, inflammatory, and stressful reaction in the body. And there are a few particular foods and food-like substances that are known to have a very negative effect in this regard. So starting off with with some of the less commonly talked about gut irritants, this isn't necessarily a food, but a food additive that is used to increase the shelf life and stabilize certain foods, mostly canned foods and other processed industrial foods, and that substance is carrageenan. So carrageenan is a polysaccharide that is derived of seaweed. So you'd think it'd be safe and natural, but the fact of the matter is carrageenan, although considered safe, contributes to a phenomenon known as parasorption, where it actually increases the permeability of the gut and allows microparticles of carrageenan to enter the bloodstream, having a toxic effect on the body. In fact, carrageenan's toxic effects are used in various laboratory studies to induce inflammation in the growth of tumors and cancerous cells for experimental uses. However, the FDA considers it a safe substance and allows it into our food products because they argue that the butric acid that is produced by the intestinal bacteria by fermenting the carrageenan is protective against the toxic effects of carrageenan. However, what is overlooked is the fact that as our gut bacteria try to break down and digest the carrageenan, what happens is an increased production of serotonin, which again is actually an inflammatory mediator, and both carrageenan and chronic elevated levels of serotonin are known to contribute to ulcerative colitis and the inflammation of the intestines. So although the bacteria in our intestines can digest or ferment carrageenan, this just contributes to perisorption, which actually increases gut permeability and allows the carrageenan and other particles, food particles, to leak through the gut wall and into the bloodstream, contributing to immunodeficiencies, 
a stress response, and inflammatory conditions. Not to mention that the serotogenic effects of carrageenan synergizes with the inflammatory pathogenic endotoxins or lipopolysaccharides that contribute to the leakiness of the gut wall and the carrageenan particles once in the bloodstream have very similar effects to that of estrogen in the free circulating fatty acids, mostly that it inhibits mitochondrial respiration. So the next time you're in the grocery store, be sure to check the backs of the labels of any products that you're buying that are industrialized in other words, so ice creams, soups, creamers, anything in a box or a package or a can could potentially have carrageenan in it. And since it's considered to be a natural substance derived of seaweed, a lot of organic and otherwise healthy or health food products contain carrageenan, mostly in various milks, creamers, even plant-based creamers and nut milks, as well as ice creams. Moving along, looking at a group of foods that are known to be incredibly irritating to the gut and contributing factors to not just gut inflammation, but even liver disease. Because of the strong correlation between the liver and the intestines, irritating the gut to the point where it cannot properly eliminate Toxins can contribute to not just the leakiness of the gut and the inflammation in the gut, but the reabsorption of toxins circulating through the liver, which can ultimately damage your liver. And the group of foods that are most likely to do this are actually soluble fibers. So these are foods that are otherwise promoted as healthy sources of fiber. So foods like your various grains and grain products, beans or legumes, which includes things like peanuts, corn, and soy, as well as any of the products that are derived of these substances. And if you take a look at this study here, the reason that soluble fiber can actually contribute to liver disease is because when the bacteria in your gut tries to break down these soluble fibers, they produce inflammatory metabolites as byproducts. So lipopolysaccharide or endotoxin, and these inflammatory byproducts of their digestion are what contribute to the leakiness of the gut and the reabsorption of various toxins and stress hormones like estrogen through the liver, which contributes to liver disease. So when it comes to healthy sources of fiber, I think the insoluble fibers are a bit healthier in regards to their digestibility and their ability to sort of bulk up the stool and be kind of resistant to digestion or fermentation of bacteria. And this can contribute to more or less a cleansing effect of the intestines, which helps to bind or bulk up the stool and bring in some of the toxins to be eliminated from the body. So the better sources of insoluble fiber are going to include things like raw carrot, bamboo shoots, and really well-cooked mushrooms. Now the third and final gut irritating food I wanna talk about is pectin. So pectin is another polysaccharide that you're gonna find in natural foods, mostly in the peels of various fruits. So the peels of apples, for example, contain a high amount of pectin. And sometimes people add in a pectin extract into things like jellies and jams and other foods to act as a stabilizer. Now, the problem with pectin is that like other polysaccharides or oligosaccharides, they're difficult to break down. And when your intestines try to break something down like pectin, what can happen is they produce these inflammatory metabolites or metabolic byproducts, which increases the production of the endotoxin, which again are inflammatory to the intestinal wall and tend to stimulate the production of the inflammatory serotonin. So these substances obviously encompass a lot of different foods. So I think rather than going through a list of all the different foods, it's just better to be aware of these primary substances and to avoid their consumption as much as possible and look at any food you're purchasing that might contain these things. So upon eliminating these foods, the foods that are really left in regards to easy to digest or easy to break down foods that are the least irritating to the intestines are going to be the foods that actually contain little to no fiber in them, which would result in no fermentation, no endotoxin production, no serotonin production, and therefore no inflammation. So this is why you see people on the carnivore diet experiencing great success, because they removed a lot of the difficult to digest starches and indigestible fibers that are causing these issues. However, you still need fiber in the diet. So these people might run into issues a couple months down the line in regards to the inability to you know, escort their waste out of the body because certain fibers can actually help to bulk up the stool, which can draw in toxins and estrogens and eliminate them from the body, having a detoxifying effect. But you just wanna make sure you're getting the right fibers. So in regards to the easiest foods to digest, there's an extensive list of foods that we talk about in our Perfect Digestion course. 
but ultimately the foods that are free of fiber are going to usually be more easy to break down, granted that they are not rich in the polyunsaturated fatty acids, which can cause inflammation to the gut and synergize with estrogen and other inflammatory substances. But in regards to the right types of fibers for bulking up the stool and detoxifying the colon and intestines, we're gonna to wanna to focus more on the insoluble fibers. So really, really ripe organic fruit is going to be good, especially fruit that has been peeled and cooked can be very beneficial. As I mentioned frequently, the consumption of raw carrot, really well-cooked mushrooms and bamboo shoots, and even really well-cooked white rice can be a very beneficial source of easy to digest fiber that will bulk up the stool. But again, to learn more about the exact foods or dietary protocol I would recommend for people experiencing digestive issues of any sorts and get an extensive list of the foods to consume and the ones to avoid, definitely be sure to check out our perfect digestion course. Otherwise, that brings this video to a close. If you found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. For learning more beyond this YouTube channel, for referencing the studies I mentioned in this video, or for checking out our perfect digestion course, be sure to check the description box below for links to all of those things, as well as links to our blog and our online tonic herb shop.